everyone's talking about, oh, there's going to be a bank bailout. And, you know, to some extent, there might be. I don't think it matters too much right now. I can't wait to see how markets react. It's going to be crazy. Monday, early trading, pre-market, European open. Let's see how the European banks react. Because obviously, European markets close earlier than the US markets on Friday and every day. And I was just thinking, all right, so let's take a look at all the different sectors. What should I look at? Crypto, maybe the banking sector. That's why I'm looking at the XLF right now. And I thought, you know what? It's gold. It's back to gold, back to basics, back to my favorite sector. Because I don't want to say it's invincible, but you've got gold and even silver. But let's just focus on gold because, you know, gold goes up. Sometimes silver doesn't in moments like these, like on Thursday. You know, I think you had silver sort of flat whilst gold was up 1%. So Gold definitely goes up when there's fear. When there's absolute chaotic fear, gold can go down. You've seen the dollar go up. I think the beginning of the bear market and other times it's done that too. But generally speaking, where do you put your money in moments like these, financial crisis? I say gold and dollar. You're pretty much well hedged. I mean, every sector gets taken down when it's chaotic. But if you've got, let's say, 50% in gold, 50% in the dollar, you're probably not going to lose any money and you might even make a bit. Now, obviously, you've got certain positions you don't want to sell right now and I'm not going to sell my positions. I'm, I'm part of that group. But gold will go up, in my opinion, in this crisis next week. And you can even go to new highs. I mean, not new highs, but 2000 is seriously within the scope of reality. So if gold can go up just on the fear trade and let's say they start bailing people out, well, that's kind of QE. Right. I mean, they might sort of twist their way around and, and prove that theoretically it's not QE, but the market will probably react as if it's QE or an N to QT or, you know, rate rise priced in. So you may have the market going up. Let's just focus on gold. Gold will probably go up because it's oh, pro QE and gold might go up because if there isn't that sort of response, well, gold's going up out of fear. So gold could go up regardless. So I'm just here to say gold looks good next week, um, whatever happens. And obviously, if you have some money on the sidelines, and I've still got about 50% in cash, and let's say the rest of it, let's say 40% in gold-related assets. So I'm kind of cool no matter what happens. I've got cash on the sidelines in case it drops further because these miners are looking very cheap relative to everything, even the underlying metal. So uh, it looks good for gold. Now, I'm not going to look at the XLF. I, I was looking at it, you know, because obviously the banking sector was taking front stage this week, especially Thursday and Friday when the news broke out. And let's just, you know, take a look at how much downside we got, about 9% until we hit the lows. The S&P, the NASDAQ, I've already done a video on those uh, Friday. I think it's pretty accurate, so I'm not going to go over that again. But let me just focus on gold because gold is looking very good. And it took time for me to really dissect a bit more. Look at that on gold. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. You know, there's your Thursday and Friday reaction to the financial crisis, because this isn't even recession-related uh, momentum. This is financial crisis. And this looks good. This is closing the high of day, close above the last couple of uh, highs over there. So you've got this sort of W pattern. It looks good. And, you know, if there's any continuation, and Monday will be fireworks, like Sunday night for me in Europe, you know, slash Monday, a very early Monday, you could have some fireworks. And to me, gold, I don't see why it would go down much. I mean, it would go down, let's see, because the Fed has not had this secret meeting. There's talk all over Twitter that they've decided to backstop other banks and depositors, whatever. At the end of the day, I discount news quite a lot because after all the news, a lot of stuff is usually priced in. I don't think this type of stuff is priced in because this is really a surprise here. But I just like to see price action. And I think my point is, if you start to see gold move up just a little bit, you know, and I don't think there's going to be a little bit of a movement here in all assets uh, Monday, but, you know, move up maybe with the dollar. It could even go up with the dollar because, you know, in absolute moments of fear, that, that does happen too. We start to take out 1885, 1890. You could have some short stops, you know, bam, straight through 1900. And by then, you've just got momentum. You've just got fear that could take over. And I think my point is, and we've had $100 day moves in gold before. And actually, with the price where it is, $100 isn't as much as it was back in the sort of 1300s. But, you know, is a move like this impossible? 
I've seen one or two, I've seen two percent. I think that that was a two percent day the other day, Friday. Let's just see, you know, two percent. Let's say there's another two percent day. And I again, I think a lot of people have agreed that that wasn't a create a, a crazy move in all assets on Friday. You know, the S and P, the Dow, the Nasdaq down what? Not even two percent. We've seen eight, ten percent moves to the downside before. So look at that one percent move, not even two percent to get to nineteen hundred. And then you've got this absolute chaotic squeeze, at least to retest again this ascending. I think it's possible. And if it's not Monday, it could be Tuesday, Wednesday. And I don't see much downside. So, I mean, 1800 is so far active as perfect double bottom, you know, higher low, technically, nice psychological number. Uh, so, yeah. And what would silver do if we start? To, I mean, silver has a lot of catching up to do. I understand why it's a little delayed. It's not as much a monetary metal, at least for the big institutions on an initial reaction, but you can at least expect to take out this descending. So you could have silver start to play catch up. I mean, to be where gold is, it needs to be basically here. You know, it's almost 8% away. So I haven't looked at the gold versus silver ratio, but I'm sure it's lower than it should be right now. Um, and if gold does start to rise back up to that, you know, old high up here 1960 let's say how much would silver have to do that's crazy 20 percent move and again that's when it starts to look pretty good for a general you know longer term breakout and with gold i mean if we just zoom out exactly if we zoom out here we've got 1960 the next stop is really 2000 now i don't think that will happen uh that might take several weeks at least but silver, the, the, the room that silver has to run is incredible. And then the question is, all right, GDX, GDXJ, what are you going to do? Because it is getting pulled down by the markets. I'm just going to look at GDX. I'm not going to bother the GDXJ because it's the same thing. And it's better to probably look at the seniors in this, in this case. Now, this is even underperforming silver, understandably, because it's following the markets down, but it's getting dragged up by the metals. So... Not the worst place to have your equities, you know, gold and silver assets, especially when everything else just red. But, you know, just to go back to where it was, pretty similar to silver. And these are the seniors. The juniors obviously have a, a lot more. Let's just take a look at that. It should be more than 20%. Yeah, a bit more. But again, a bit like silver, it's seriously underperforming. And the miners will, re I think they should, you might have a day where, the miners, and we've had this before, the GDX, the GDXJ are very green whilst the market is very red. We haven't had that in a long time, a sort of dislocation. And I think it would be justified because ultimately the miners are based on, they should be, the earnings of the metal for the companies that they represent. So I'm very happy where I am with a lot of miners and a lot of cash. I don't actually own gold or silver. I'm in the miners as a sort of leverage play, let's say. But if gold starts to go to 1960, I mean, let's see if we get to, to, to 1900 first. But uh, I think the miners are looking very good. And I think I'll leave it there. I just wanted to share those thoughts, namely just to summarize that gold will probably do well either, either way. Either, you know, let's say there's a lot more fear and the markets keep going down. Gold keeps its momentum up. Or, oh my God, they're pivoting, and I don't think it would be a real pivot, but you know they're going to backstop, they're going to do some sort of pro-QE activity, then everything goes up, but gold and silver too, and probably especially gold and silver. So I think things are looking very good for gold, silver, GDX and GDXJ, and you have to remember, I'm just trading with the markets here, and the markets, I think it's absolutely ridiculous, upside down as usual, but oh, inflation is very high. Therefore, everything goes down because the Fed's going to raise rates. Well, the real reaction should be inflation is very high. Then assets should go up to represent inflation, especially gold and silver. Why is gold and silver been going down all this time? Maybe not all this time. Some of it was consolidation. But you know, since this period here, at least, why is gold and silver going down? Because inflation is high. It should be up. So you've also got that third reason. You've got inflation high. You've got a pro QE pivot possible today, Sunday, they're probably talking about it. And you've got fear. It's kind of the perfect asset. And if you've got a bit of dollars on the sidelines, then if it does drop even more, which makes no sense, but we know that happens a lot, then you have the ability to buy probably the most valuable asset 
uh, and an even greater discount. So yeah, let me know what you think. But to me, it's kind of looking invincible. And I'm looking forward to uh, to Monday or even Sunday.